Okay, give me just a second here. And... Skadoosh. Hello, and welcome to... Wow. Take a look. We got somebody who wants to say hello before I even start the show. Carlton? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put you on the floor, okay? Buzzbutt? Yeah. I'm going to put you on the floor. Ah! Okay. Well... Are you who I think you are, Jason? Alrighty. Real quick, just wanted to show, uh, I just finished printing this. The intent behind this is that, yeah. The intent behind this is that if I've got an entire squad to paint, stick them on here with some uh, blue tack and just sit there and spray the whole thing and then get this big flat base so I can set it down to let things dry and that sort of thing so I can, you know, just sit here and paint an entire squad at once. Now. Let's, let me go ahead and since you're here, we can go ahead and start working on the figure. Alrighty, so we're going to start with there. By the way, I do need to say before we get really started and everything, um, don't forget like, subscribe, bell icon, the usual, and any cubic photon. All of these done by the photon. Okay, now, this is my default base male geometry. Obviously, it's not perfect. There's things like area near the corner of the jaw and the finger, the ring finger and the thumb need to get fixed, but those can be done in the sculpting. For right now, this the, the, the level of detail is a lot better than my previous version. Now, first thing I need to know. You said it's part fighter, part barbarian. What exactly do you mean by that? And do, is he like a multi-class character? And if so, would you say he's more fighter with a bad temper or more barbarian with uh, technique and skill? Oh, and back here is just, you know, the bigger figures. Yes, Shinju. Okay. All right, then. So, I guess the next thing to ask, number one, what kind of armor does he wear? Number two, what's his primary weapon? Number three... Uh, what kind of pose do you want him in? Because as you can see, this is a default A pose. It's not a T pose, it's not a meme, it's an A pose. By the way, uh, YouTube has about a 10 second lag built in, so yeah.
Oh, and for those who have been watching for a while, I got a new microphone, and hopefully this one works better than the previous one. Scale mail with chest piece, kilt type bottom, double headed battle axe. Okay, overhead swing is difficult because the arms start to intersect with the head in the miniature because proportions are different than they are in a real human being. Would you prefer something kind of just otherwise upwards or horizontal over one shoulder like the right or the left? Because overhead, the arms will kind of fuse with the head. <clears throat> Leaning on one knee? You mean like tilted to one side like like that well, like that <clears throat> okay meanwhile go ahead and load in a prop all right it's not a Dane axe it's a double beaked axe okay Right. Which hand do you want closer to the head? The right hand or the left hand? Knees bent, bent over with arm resting on knee. I'm trying to... Do you mean... All right, is he then not swinging? Is he just kind of like this? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so it's like his one leg is up standing on something and he's leaning on it, like a Captain Morgan pose. That'd be a good way to describe it. Okay, any preference on what you want him standing on? <clears throat> or do you want just like a rock? By the way, for the sake of posing, we are going to hide the axe for right now. Okay, it'd probably be a lot simpler just to do a rock. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to 3D Studio Max. File, import. And I'm going to load in just the basic figure. Single mesh. Skadoosh. Okay. Now. To make a rock. First of all, this thing is going to be probably about the size of the... Th about as long as from the bottom of the butt to the top of the knee. We're going to start with a sphere. And then we're going to start with a geosphere. 
and we're just going to make one about the size of the thigh. We're going to move it down here just for the sake of working on it. And then we're going to delete that. And here we're going to take it, we're going to drop it to one segment. This is basically roughly equal to a D20. <clears throat> the reason we're doing this is actually we can make it two segments. This is a D20 where every segment is yeah. Now every segment is divided up. Okay, edible poly. Let's select all of these. We're going to flatten it by using Y scale. And then we're going to move those vertexes to zero to floor them. And then we're going to make them a little bit bigger. There. Now we're going to take this group, we're going to bring it down to about there. In this group, we're going to bring it down to about there. Now, we're going to select these edges and only those edges, and we're going to chamfer until it's roughly twice as many there. There we go. Now, the next thing is, we're going to mesh smooth it. That's one, two, collapse all. We're then going to grab, let's say, those vertexes. No, we need to do it a little bit lower. We need to grab down here. Oh, now we're going to need to do it kind of towards the back, so we're going to do it down here. <clears throat> now, that's two vertexes. We're going to go to Soft Selection and reduce the size of the selection until it's about there. And then we're going to just simply lock the Soft Selection. Let's move it out there. We're going to make it a little bit wider that way and further back that way. Now the last thing that we're going to do before we export this is we're going to give it a vague bit of noise. Now normally what happens with noise as we add it it gets a bit of a randomness to it. And this will make it end up giving us a long way to, of the way towards making this a rock. Collapse all. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to tweak the shape. We're going to use what's called FFD 3x3. This creates a box of vertexes. And when we go select by these control points, I'm select up here, we're going to kind of pull it back this way. I'm select here and deselect the bottom one. And now we only have two, we're going to push it in. Then we're going to select the entire back, <coughs> back top and lower it to give us more of a slope on this rock. And then we're going to collapse it. That's just to sh j give us a bit of more of a shaping. And as you can see, we've turned this rock, turned this sphere into a rock. We're going to tweak it a bit more when it comes time with the with ZBrush. But for right now, we're just going to export selected meshes New base figure, Patreon, Warbar. 
OBJ format. Rock. And that's our rock. And we're bringing in file import. And that'll be new base figure, Patreon, war bar, rock. Accept. Now we're going to bring it forward a bit. Oh, wrong one. There. We're going to bring it forward a bit and over a little. <clears throat> now, we're going to take and start posing the figure. Now, one thing that's always done with a figure is you always, always tilt the hips and the shoulders. You never want them parallel to the ground. bit and over. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the hip and we're going to pin it. Rotation and translation. We're going to select the foot. Well first we're going to select the, the shin and we're going to lock side to side. Shins don't move side to side. The foot and we're going to pull it up a little bit more and out a little bit more. Okay. Now we can take this and bring it over just a bit more. And maybe rotate it that way. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this leg and bring it in forward just a little bit, just a little bit. <clears throat> Actually wait, that's way too, I need to. We need to make sure that he's going to fit on the base. <clears throat> Because if it's too big, it won't fit on the base. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the front view. And with both feet selected, we're going to click on them. Okay, good. This one we can bring up just a little bit because we are going to be putting boots on him. Okay, go back to perspective view. Actually, let's take this, let's rotate that leg. Yeah, that's a bit better. Now we're going to take the waist and chest at the same time by using all. We're going to twist them slightly this way, bend them slightly forward, and side to side slightly. And as you can see now, neither the hips nor the shoulders are parallel to the ground. And we're going to take this shoulder, this collarbone rather, we're going to bring it forward and down a little. We're going to bring it up and for, uh, up and forward. I was going backwards there. 
and then we're going to bend the forearm. You need to bend it just a little bit more. Twist it. And then we're going to... Actually, we can bring this back a bit because that's a bit too far forward. No, not side to side. Okay, there we go. That's good enough. Now we're going to tilt the neck and the head back because he's not going to be staring at the ground. I don't think your fighter barbarian is very pensive. Now this shoulder, we're actually going to Twist it forward a little, and then come down a little, that collar. And we're going to bring the arm down and bend it forward at the elbow. And twist, and bend it forward a bit more, and then bend the hand forward, and twist it. And then just to see, okay. What we need to do now is going to be, we're going to be twisting it like that so that the axe is not directly out of it, directly in his grasp. Bring it up a bit. And then we're going to go below. And we're going to move it so that it's in his fist. Okay, now from the front view. zoom out a little bit so we can see the control arrow and we're going to bring this down until it slightly touches the base okay now we go back to perspective view now I'm gonna assume that you don't want him gawping like a gormless monkey so we're gonna close the mouth How does this look for a basic pose? A mug. Okay, I do not have a mug prop handy. I'd have to make a, make one. Okay, a snarl. At this time, I do not have a way to make one in this, but the closest I can come is no. I'll do it in the sculpting. However, I can lower one brow bring them out so it's a bit more exaggerated that's a bit too far
and then that will be snarling. Alright, now, now we add on, first of all, the boots. And second of all, the kilt. Or at least base geometry for the kilt. While we're here, we're going to go ahead and unpin the hips. Okay, now comes my next question. Okay, I'm going to be curling the hand a bit, so this is not the final pose. Next question. How muscular is he? Is he like typical warrior like this? Or is he like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lufthansa, no big guy, oh. Consider he will be wearing very, very bulky muscled. Okay, so we go back to parameters. And under adjust, we have muscular. So we're talking pretty massively muscular, right? Okay, expand from selected. I'm going to select all the fingers and we're going to bend them slightly. And then we're going to kind of tweak this thumb so it's a little bit closer to the hand and further down. There we go. He's got a relaxed finger now. Okay. Last question. Does he wear a helmet? Well, last question for now, before I bring him into ZBrush. Or does he have bushy hair? You know, that kind of thing. No helmet. He's bald but has a beard. Okay. Um, are we talking dwarf level beard? Or are we talking a little bit more than what I got? You know. No, the belt is added later on. Um, so he's wearing basically a full scale hauberk. Or is he wearing just a scale shirt with a cloth kilt? Also, boots. Do his boots have cuffs or not? You know, oh, that's the wrong thing. Oh, no. There we go. Uh, there, boot cuffs. Or not. Okay, so just a not hanging down into his shirt, just something that'll be on the head part. So boot cuffs or no? Okay, metal boots, all right. Do you mean armored boots, or do you mean boots with metal plates on them? 
or are the boots themselves like full on grieve and sabaton? That you can answer later, actually. Um, what I'm going to do, we're going to hide <coughs> all the extra bits. Except for the boots. And we're going to export this. Also, actually, since he's got the mus mus muscles, you can kind of rotate this hand. Oh, no, wrong. No, I was wanting to do it from here. Thank you. Rotate the arm out a little bit and up just a little because there's enough mass there to push the arm further out. All right. Now, we're going to export this under new base figure, Patreon Warbar. Barbad, that's the body, except we hide the body and the boots. We make the kilt visible, file, export, kilt, hide the kilt, make the axe visible, file, export, axe. In case you're wondering, I'm putting a Z in front of all these file names to make sure that they end up at the end of the directory when sorted by name. And then we're going to make the rock. File, export, rock. And we switch over to ZBrush. Well, we got to hide that. And uh, I've got to, forgot to make sure that it fit the screen instead of went off the screen. Okay, now we're going to start off by importing meshes, new base figure, Patreon, Warbar, Barbod. And we're going to draw them in and switch to draw. And then we're going to change the, the default material to a gray because this is more realistic on, this, on the uh, shading and the detailing. And then we're going to insert polymesh, import kilt, insert polymesh, import axe, insert polymesh, import rock. Okay, now this is the basis starting point for the sculpting. And one of the first things we're going to do, we're going to hide all the extras. And from him, we're going to get started on tweaking some flaws like the little knuckle here. Um, we're going to blend in where the boots meet the, uh, the leg. And we're also going to make a duplicate of this from which we're going to make the shirt. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to subdivide it until it's around, you know, 2.3 million is good. Then Dynamesh, 1,024. Dynamesh. Skadoosh. Okay, and it's at 1.04 million polygons. Okay, that's good enough. We're going to bring in and zoom in. And down here on the leg, we have the seam. We're also going to kind of smooth out that part right there. And we're going to smooth out all of these seams where the boot meets the leg. And there's a couple spots here where, the, where it kind of almost overlaps. there 
and smooth out here. Okay, frame out. And we have blended the boot feet into the foot foot. Now, before we do anything else, we're going to come up here. And break out the tablet. And stylus. Go to... First of all, click on this button. What this means is now it remembers the size of each brush on a brush by brush basis. And we're going to switch to slash. Bring that intensity down, bring the draw size down quite a lot. Turn off lazy mouse and we're going to slash in deeply here. The reason being we're now going to take move topological well that's around 12 halfway between what we want. And we're going to grab gonna drag up to give him his snarl Then we're going to go back to slash, make it smaller, or not smaller, but less deep and larger. And we're going to exaggerate that, and then a lot less deep over here. We're going to come around there. Now we're going to frame, we're going to make this smaller and we're going to kind of do a smooth there. The reason for this is that will end up being teeth, but first we've got to re topologize it because we want that a little bit, there we go. And we're going to and then There we go. You got your snarl. Okay, again, armored boots. Do you mean his boots are full on like he stole them from a knight? Or are they leather boots with armor plates on them? smooth out right here just to clear that up here let's go ahead and inflate it and then smooth it and then the hand
Okay, there we go. Okay, leather boots with armor plates. Okay. Alright, now, in order to make his shirt, by the way, is his, is his shirt long sleeve or short sleeve? But in order to make it, we're going to duplicate his body. Okay? And this duplicate, we're going to geometry, and we're going to Z remesher, half size, click. It's going to take a few minutes. If it's short sleeve, does he have bracers? Okay, so sleeveless at the shoulder. Does he have bracers? Does he have any upper arm pieces? Like one arm has a bracer, one arm has a shoulder plate. We're going to keep doing this until it gets so simple that it's almost totally smooth. Because we don't want chain, we don't want scales to follow his muscles on his chest. We just want to have the impression underneath them because metal's not going to bend like that. It would look like spandex and not the real thing. All right, gonna do it a couple more times. Right hand has a bracer, left shoulder has shoulder pad. Is it a big one? Is it just a, like a little disc hanging down from the shirt? <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> we're gonna bring it until we're probably down to about two or 3,000. As you can see, it's getting very, very simple, but it's still keeping too much of the uh, musculature. We don't want that. And now we're starting to lose a lot of the explicit detail, which is what we want. And one more. That should do it. Now... We're going to turn off the frame. We're going to subdivide it until there. We've got until it's. Let's make one more time. Yeah, one. More. We're now going to make the body visible. As you can see, this oversimplified version kind of sinks in. So we're going to deformation. And we're going to inflate until it is there now we're going back to subtool we're going to open up extract and get it ready for thickness of zero and no double and we're going to draw on <coughs> the limits of the, of the shirt Okay, V-neck or high neck? And does he have a gorget? Okay, so he's got a full-on, full, like, quarter spear. Like someone took a, a spear and cut it in quarters and has that over one shoulder. Okay. How, what's the neck shape? And I'm assuming that the bottom of the scale is tucked under the belt. The belt goes over top. V-neck. Okay. So we're going to bring this down here and then back up this way. And then we're going to bring it up over here. Bring it down here. Bring it, make it kind of low so that it can be underneath where the where we're gonna make the belt. And 
Okay. And then... And this around and down to there. What we're doing is by masking off this area, the area that is masked off is going to become his shirt. We're going to have to clean off some of this after we do it because that arm is just a bit too close. We're also going to hide the body body. The body body. The body body. Okay. Now. So is that about where he's got scales? Okay then, what we do now is we click extract and then accept. We click on him and draw to erase the mask parts and then here what we need to do is, okay, we need to go down to polygroups and auto group. Good. Now we select that, and it made that extra bit go away. Frame back out. We go back to Geometry, and under Modify Topology, we click Delete Hidden, Del Hidden. There. Now, we're going to turn off Polygroups, make the body visible again, the regular body. And we can see there's a couple areas we still need to tweak. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the move tool and we're going to move it ever so slightly off his um, nipples. Okay. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to geometry once again we're going to Z remesher and we're going to start going through that half and half and half until we get a very low poly version one we can turn off adapt here after it finishes because we don't need don't have any sharp edges for it to adapt 32 and from 32 it becomes 15 yeah it's gonna cut a lot faster without having to try to adapt any edges the reason why we're going so low is we want it to map quickly Okay, now, while it's like this, we're going to once again grab and move out just a little bit. I'm going to grab here, move it out. Grab down here, move it out. Until it's... 
there can be a little bit of overlap because we'll tweak it once we bring it back in. Actually, what we could do is grab here and pull it out. There we go. And that's where his shirt, that's his shirt for now. But obviously that's not scales. So what we do, go back to geometry and modify topology, and we're going to close holes. You'll notice that they are separate groups. After we close these holes, we're going to, where is it? Unweld groups border. What that does is this makes them separate groups. Now we're going to export it. Export. Uh, we're going to call it Z shirt. And then, yeah, as you can see, what this does, it 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 gives us a border for this for the shirt, so it's no longer a single dimension. Now. It's still not scales. So we open up this program, which is called UV Layout. You can use almost any other UV mapping program for what I'm about to do. We load. No. New base fig, Patreon, Warbar, C shirt. Okay, now we hit D to drop the uh, little end caps. And now we need to cut it. So we're going to cut it at the shoulder, at the waist, and then at the shoulder and the waist. Then I hit enter and it splits apart. Drop, drop. We then view at the UVs. We're going to hit F and flatten them a little bit then optimize run for as long as it needs to and bang that was pretty quick wasn't it now we're going to take these and we're going to rotate them so that what would have been the where is the i'm where was the top? okay let's check something real quick one two three four five six one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I wanted to make sure I had it facing upright. Now, we got a pack. We can close optimize, click on best, give it a little bit of space. Pack all. There. Nicely packed automatically. We go to edit and auto fit, which gives us a little bit of space at the rim. Save all, save, dismiss, exit. And that's all that took. Now we're simply going to load it on top of itself. Z shirt. Now the problem is right now it's different groups, which means if we try to subdivide it it'll split apart so we go to geometry weld points that's all we took now we're going to subdivide one two three four five we need at least this many points to get a good scale starting and we're going to pull the chest out a little bit more to get off that nipple and a small that small part of the back okay now we're going to turn it into scales how do you ask? With surface noise. Now, we're going to start off. We're going to use UVs. That's why we mapped it. Alpha on off, we click on it, and I happen to have an alpha, under alphas, really. That's scales. We're now going to mix basic noise down to zero, increase the strength a lot, and then we're going to shrink the scale until it's about right for the miniature, which will be about here. Click OK. 
And that's basically what it'll look like when we're done, but we're not done. So, we click on Mask by Noise. We then control click in the middle. Once again, you can easily see how these scales are going to look. We go to Deformation, and we're going to inflate it. Okay, that's kind of thick right there, but not thick, but it's too thick as a shirt. So we're going to click again and invert the 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 uh, masking. Actually, what we should have done. Mask all of it. There. Now those neck parts won't inflate. We're going to inflate about 15. And once again, we're going to totally mask the caps. Now we're going to deflate it a little bit. Unmask everything and inflate. there. That is the scales. Rather than make every individual scale, this is how we do it. Now we're going to make, we're going to bring the, uh, using the move tool, we're going to move this in a little bit to give us a bit more of a, more room for the belt. Only some areas are going to be brought in like this. Only the ones that really are sticking out too far like right down here okay I'm gonna bring that out just a little all right that is your scale shirt mm-hmm that's how I can do a figure in two hours is I've perfected these little techniques now under subtool, under geometry rather, we're going to go to Dynamesh, 1024, Dynamesh. The reason we did that, number one, it reduced the polygon count. Number two, it'll make it easier when it comes time later to blend it all in. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to hide that shirt. We're going to blend the kilt in. Geometry, subdivide a couple times, delete lower, and we're going to need to move the, this bottom of the leg. We're going to move this out because that's not how a kilt would hang. And we're going to grab here going to pull it up a bit because again that's not how a kilt would hang okay now we're going to smooth over this area When you hear the tapping, that's because every time I hit the number one, it repeats what I just did, which in this case is the smoothing. Now, let's make the mapping make that a bit bigger. We're going to bring this down because, again, that's not what it would do. Okay, there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to blend, we're going to combine these. We're going to pop this up to there, and then we're going to merge down. Always okay. And then I control drag, and it will do the Dynamesh again, which fuses it into a single solid polygon surface. 
And so we're going to smooth out these areas where they overlap so that it blends into one. And here as well. And then back here. And then finally, this side of the hip. We're going to put the scales on. We're also going to take, well, take the scales, color, fill object, so it stays white when we it's not selected, just because we want it to get a, a nice look on how it's going to be when it's done. Okay, now, in order to make the belt, we need this guy. Yeah, that guy. And we're going to take a brief pause. Almost all of the clothing is going to be based on this. The exception will be the top of the boots and the wristband. Okay, now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to determine his belt. Is it one of those big old broad... Okay, it's like a weightlifting belt. Okay, so it's more like, it's it's less like a weightlifting belt and more like a pro wrestling belt. Is that it? Nope, nope, no, no, no. No, cat, go. Do not jump on my tablet, furball. Okay. <clears throat> Since what we're going to do now is we're going to turn on transparency. What that does is that will let us actually map out where our belt is going to be with the scales visible but not blocking the mat, the, the brush. Okay, so what we got to do is the belt is going to basically barely be above the knee there. In fact, it's probably going to go a little bit higher because we don't want that part of the knee erase that and then we're gonna bring it down we're just gonna follow the bottom of the scale for right now and then we're gonna go back in and reshape the front so we want it kind of come in like that and once again we're going to erase where it meets the bend because we don't want it bending and then see Warhammer used to use belts like these of all things for their elves Gonna go back to extract, turn on double, and make the thickness 0 0.03. That is what the belt will end up looking like. Okay, since we have, since it's shaped like this, does it mean that there's the actual attachment buckle in the back? It's not necessary to say right now, it's just, okay, so now. Extract, accept, draw, we go back to him and we draw to get rid of the masking. And, yeah. Now, you said there's a big disc on the front, so what we're going to use, I actually have 
a big disk. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring it up like this. Look at it and we see that, we, yeah, that's pretty much what we want. So I'm going to move it to another tool. And here we're going to subdivide it a few times and then dynamize it at 256 and then subdivide it a few times until it's big enough that I think I can probably carve in the runes on it. Okay, you said it has a JS on the front. Let me go ahead and rotate it so that it's like upright from the point of view of carving on it. Okay, now the JS. Okay, yes. Do you want it to look runic or fancified or like someone who could barely write pounded it in with a hammer and chisel? Also, this front disc buckle, is it like hammered metal? Or is this like, like a smooth metal that he just then bashed in? Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to our light box and go to brushes and go to orb. And under orb, we're going to get orb cracks. Okay, we're going to shrink the mouse. Change that lazy radius pretty high. And increase the intensity a little bit. Okay. Now. <clears throat> we're going to. Okay, that's way too small. And not deep enough. Okay, that's too big. Okay. Crude KS. Now also on that belt, since you said there's jewels, we can add those in just a couple strikes. Oh, wrong one. Let's add some diamond shaped jewels. That's all we need to really get that across, get that message across. So we're gonna merge that down, subdivide it a couple times, and okay. 
Now, next comes the wrist bracer in this hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a nice angle where we got a good chunk of the wrist by itself. And then I'm just going to mask it off. We're going to then unmask that. Frame out. And this is going to extract at 0 0.03. Extract, accept, draw to get rid of the masking. Click back on him, draw to get rid of the masking. There's his wristband. Now, we need to make his pauldron. So we're going to hide everything except for the scales and our big buddy. And once again, we're going to transparency. Now what we're going to do is very simple. We're going to get a nice angle. We're going to click and we're going to draw. Then, we're going to go to a regular brush. Well, let's make it, uh, uh, let's make it this one, yeah. And we're going to draw on a disc on front and back. Just to make it more obvious on how it's staying on him. Okay. We're going to turn off transparency. And we're going to extract this at 0 0.05. Accept. Draw. Click on him. Draw. How's that for his pauldron? Okay, one thing that we're going to do here is to give it a bit of a nice clear delineation. We're going up to Lazy Mouse. We're going to Curve Functions and Frame Mesh. Now, I'm going over to Curve Tube. We're going to shrink this down quite a bit. That's a bit too small. Still too small. Still too small. Keep forgetting that. There we go. That's what we want. The reason for that is putting a trim on it helps delineate and helps keep it separate from the rest of the figure. Now what we need to do is we need to take that trim and subdivide it a little bit to make it a little bit smoother. Because right now it's got a lot of polygons visible. Then we take that and we merge down. Now. Oh, the, the damage will come towards the end. Uh, next question is, do you want that trim to be clearly visible so you could, for example, paint it brass where the rest of the metal is silver or steel? Or do you want it to kind of blend in so it's more like the armor itself has just been rounded off at the edges? Alright, the next thing we do is we go ahead and we're going to work on the boots. I'm going to assume that they're roughly knee high, just below the knee, 
like to about there. Oh, let me select the correct. Like about up to there. Hide that. And I'm going to hide the hand too because. I want to be able to. Okay. Now here, what we got to do is we got to come in. We're going to go to there, and then we've got to erase it from the top of the foot. Okay. And now we can unhide everything. frame so you can see. Now this we're going to extract at 0 0.03 except and then we're going to draw to get rid of the masking there and as you can see there's still masking here so we draw to get rid of that masking. Now this we're going to handle a little bit differently from how we've been handling things. We've got to dynamesh it at 256. We want 256 because that will keep a decent edge on the top. And now we're going to smooth out at the bottom because this is going to blend it into the, the, the shin. Okay, and a little bit down here. Okay. We're going to do the same thing here. You'll... what this does is here in a little bit as soon as I'm done doing this we're gonna blend it in and that'll make it smooth in yeah that's good enough okay now we're gonna subdivide it until it's nice and smooth no visible polygons delete lower and merge down draw and then once again hit it with the smooth to smooth over the seam and this blends it into a single surface the boot here and then here and then that should be about it yeah frame out there's your boots now we need to add the plate on the front of the boot and then we need to add a little bit of wrinkles on the leather part for all intents and purposes the only geometry we have left to make is his beard. Everything else from now on, well, his beard and his shin plates, everything else from now on will be detailing. And we have just a little over half an hour to go. And the detailing's not as bad as you, <coughs> excuse me, as you might expect. Okay, so we go to the boots. What we got to do is we got to mark off where the plates are going to be. And we're going to do something very similar to what we did with the pauldron. These plates are going to be very simple. Let me go ahead and I'm going to switch to a smaller brush simply because 
we don't want to accidentally mask something that we don't want. Actually, no, we want to do it from here because we want to be able to get as little of the foot as possible. And mask, erase that. Okay, now we're going to tilt it till the foot's as upright as it can be. Okay, good. And then from here, we're going to start there. It's not going to be as big, but that's because the, the foot is bent and it's not letting us get access to what we need. Actually, forget that. Let's just do it this way. And erase there. Oh. And then erase there. We don't want that. there okay now we're going to frame out we're going to extract point three accept draw we're going to go to polygroups auto group frame mesh and then we're going to curve tube here no Let's shrink it a little bit because it's a smaller bit. Okay, and then here. And then click to get rid of the curves. Subtool. Select both of these frames and merge one down. Merge one down, pass it around. Subdivide until it's smooth again. Merge down. Now on these, I would highly suggest that we blend them. Okay. Okay, it's a. It, I think we can do that. Um, let's. Where's the armband? There it is. Frame. Polygroups. Do I need it? Yes. Auto groups. Frame mesh. Still a little large. There we go. I don't want to I want to get rid of the point there we go that gets rid of the curves now in the sub tool we're gonna to take these two I don't recommend it for the wristband because they'll become invisible but I do recommend for the shin plates that we blend them Okay, boots. Now the way we do this, we're gonna hide that so we can see the boots, or see the plates, geometry. We're gonna Dynamesh at 512. Now, with that, let's say, we're gonna use the mouse instead of the tablet so that it's always at 100%. It's just like painting miniatures. There are times you use a rattle can and times you use an airbrush. There. See? It makes it a nice, it, it keeps the rounded look, but gives it a nice, more like it's a single piece of metal. 
That's all it does. By the way, the way that I made those scales, I actually do have a video when I was experimenting with the technique. It's the same way I now use to make chain mail. Okay. All, right, all of the geometry is done except for his beard. And then it's detailing. Oh, let's, meanwhile, while I'm thinking about it, let's go to his pauldron and fill object and his shins and fill object. All right. And his belt. So, oh, nah, I'm not going to worry about all those. We're going to blend them all in anyway. All right. So his beard. Is it a full beard? Is it just the beard like a Lincoln thing? Does he have the mustache? Does he have much here? Is it trimmed? Or is it just kind of shaggy and just like a like you said, about an inch. So it goes up to here or up to here? Top of the ear or bottom of the ear? Okay, what we're going to do. Before we do this, we've got to subdivide it. Because we definitely want as much polygon as many polygons as possible to draw the beard okay up to the top of the ear all right so what we do well, first of all we're gonna smooth that because that's a little erratic all right now we're gonna draw where the beard is going to be. It doesn't matter how light it is. Anything that is masked is going to end up part of the beard. to do this simply because it'll help with printing if the beard fuses at the neck instead of having this little we're gonna trim that though all right now we're going to does he have a gap in the mustache like it just does that or does it actually meet Okay, so what we do then is we because of the way we're going to be doing this there is going to be a small gap just to represent the change in direction it will fuse itself when we do this. Okay. Frame out. That's about where the must where the beard is, right? Okay. 
Okay, so next we're going to go back to subtool. We're going to extract, but this time we're extracting at 0 0.02. Extract. Uh, draw. Draw. Now, whoops, I just realized something. We accidentally forgot to remove the uh, boots masking. So we gotta go, go let me show you. See, we accidentally have that on this tool. So we go to visibility. We have masked off the, the beard, hide point. Geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. There, got rid of those extra bits. Now, what we need to do, I'm going to zoom out, and we're going to dynamesh this at 128. Nope, too little, too much. 256. And then we're going to smooth out the surface of it just to give us a nice blend. and to let the part near the top of the ear kind of fade because it will go underneath okay now we need to actually give it what looks like hair so we go sub we subdivide it a few times yeah, it should be enough. Yeah, that's enough. And we're going to start off by using what's called the clay buildup tool with a round alpha and a much smaller brush. And we're going to draw on just the basic the shapes. Let's turn off lazy mouse on this one. I'm going to kind of Because you said it was combed. forgot to auto masking back face mask it's small enough now it's not going to make much of come on We're kind of blending in right here. And then some random hairs coming down below the chin. And then just kind of just draw on some general zigzag shapes. Okay. Now we go to the slash tool, which once again, we're making sure that we don't have it too deep. We're going to draw in a little bit more deep lines in this just to make sure that we're got a nice sharp detail when it comes time to print because otherwise this will just be kind of a, a goopy mess. We're not going to do it everywhere just on the 
just on the prominent ones on top and some of the ones on bottom, as well as all of them on the sideburns. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make a place where paint will sink when it comes time. And then like, for example, it's one right here, right here. Just a few. Now we're gonna frame out. And there's the beard. How does that look? Okay. Now, comes time for detailing. We have 25 minutes. That's more than enough. We're going to hide everything except for Mr. Big Guy. Because what we need to do next is strictly on him. And that's we're going to be adding wrinkles to the boots and the kilt. Okay. We're going to start the wrinkles with the clay build-up tool. We're going to make it bigger, though, and not quite as intense. And what we're going to do is we need to add a wrinkle. Actually, we need smaller than that. We need a wrinkle here, here, and here because of lifting that leg. Okay. And then we're gonna get one that's kinda just here. Just in general placement wrinkles. We're going to smooth out these just a little. And up here a little. And I've got a daggone housefly buzzing near my ear. Okay, then we're going to give it a brief pass over this, just a little. We're going to go back to slash. Make it bigger. And we're going to slash underneath each of these wrinkles that we've added. On the bottom only, when there's a gap, where there's a wide gap between them, we're only putting it on the bottom. Okay, now we're going to come there, there, and there. And then, especially here, we're, once again, only on the bottom. Well, that's a bit too low. Okay, now we're going to switch. Let's go ahead and just bring this up here, just a couple. We're going to switch to add and drop it to about eight, make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to draw on the sharp edge onto the bottom, about the bottom third or so of these wrinkles. Because most cloth, especially woven cloth, has sharp wrinkles sharp-edged wrinkles instead of 
even curves. I mean, take a look at a typical dress shirt that gets wrinkled. It has sharp lines, not smooth, not smooth curves. And that's that. When we put up the belt so we can cover it up and see, we are going to need to move this right here. We're going to use the move topological tool. And we're going to kind of bring it down a little bit. And then back in a little bit. So that it's covered by the belt. Okay, there we go. Wrinkles on the on the on the kilt. We're gonna do the same thing on the feet now, but the feet only need the slash tool. We're gonna start with sub at 14. And we're gonna put we're gonna put them both where they are currently wrinkling. Right there. and where they usually wrinkle. Top of the toe. And in this case, here. We're gonna make it a little bit smaller. One here, and one here. Oh, note of both of those. One here, and one here. There we go. And then on the back of the ankle. I'm just gonna put two wrinkles on the back of the ankle. Doesn't look quite like regular wrinkles right now, but it will in a second. Because now we switch to add nine. And what we do is we just, oh, too small. forms like what's called an accordion wrinkle. And just a brief pass over it with the slack with a smooth tool. And there we go. here we're going to do that. The wrinkle in front is going to get the same thing as the back on the ankle. It's like a little, a little accordion look to it. And then a smooth. Oh, missed the toe part. Now these we're just simply going to draw on lines the toe because neither of the toes are actually bent right now but we want to keep the impression that there it's a used pair of boots so it's got places where it will normally wrinkle and now we put make the plates visible and we don't need to cover up any of it okay so now we're going to go ahead and make everything visible well, except for, except for that. Now the axe and the rock still need detailing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the axe geometry. We're going to subdivide it. And after we've done that, we're going to add some battle damage to the pauldron. And once more. Okay, do you have any detailing that you definitely want on your axe? Otherwise, the only thing it'll get is some rivets up here and maybe some 
scratches in that. Okay, uh, it's a little late for that right now. That's something that really I could have been done back when we were posing it. As it is, it's still going to lose a small amount down here when we cut off the absolute bottom to make it perfectly flat. Okay, so just some rivets and a couple scratches. Okay. One there. One there. It's a simple bump because at this scale, these are barely going to print anyway. Now, these are the absolute minimum detail. Now for some scratches, we're going to go back to our orb brushes and they've got some things that we're also going to end up using for... Oh, let's not use that one. Let's use the thinner one. We're also going to end up using some of these for damage over here. Now... Put a slash there. It doesn't go deep enough. Okay. So we're going to bring that intensity up to about 40. Oh, I forgot. Back face mask it. Okay. Now. In there. We're going to then load in another one just to make an even narrower slash, an even narrower problem and bring it over here, and I'm gonna kind of bring it like that. Oh, we forgot to do back base mask. Okay, that's not deep enough. There you go. That's a nice deep chunk taken out. Once again, it looks a bit ridiculous, but that's because we kind of have to. Orb slash four. Back face mask. A lot deeper. There. You got some marks on your on your thingy. And now the last things we need to do. We need to make the rock a rock instead of a blob. So geometry, subdivide it quite a bit. Delete lower. Dynamesh 512. Smooth out that. And turn on transparency just so we can see everything that we're about to do. Now it's very simple. We go to Lightbox, Brushes, and I believe it's under Mallet. Mallet Fast. Large Size. Subtract, and then we're just going to kind of... Do this to make it a lot more ragged. This represents using a mallet on clay. Just hitting clay with a mallet. And it's already looking a lot more like a rock. 
Next we're going to go in and we're going to use that Orb Cracks brush. We're going to just... Not deep enough, it needs to be a lot deeper. And just kind of draw in some cracks. Okay. That's that. And now the only thing left for to finish your figure is to put some battle damage on that uh, pauldron. And then we're going to fuse it and re and po and reduce the uh, poly count. We're going to start off with a big honking dent. Now to do this, we're going to reduce the intensity compared to what we had it over there. And now we're just going to we're going to put it right across this way. Actually, not enough. Okay, right across here. That's too deep. And there. Big ol' honking dent there. We're going to switch to orb slash one and put in a couple marks across the top there. No, that wire, because no, 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 no attack would hit like that. We're gonna and one here. Then we're gonna go orb slash two for some smaller, thinner wax. All right, so there we have our Barbarian Fighter. It, when it's printed, we'll, see, we'll be able to see almost all of that detail. Well, pretty much all of it. The only thing that might be questionable is the beards, the hairs in the beard. And even then, my money's on them at least being visible after you put a wash on. So what we can do now is we can now go to our inflatable body and delete it. And now we're going to merge everything. Okay, now frame out, zoom out. This is our body. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to trim rectangle. Reason being is this is going to be fitting on, on a base. We don't know what that base is going to be. It could be a perfectly flat base. We really need to make sure that it will fit and not wobble. So control shift drag to there. Bam. And what that does, there we go. It's got a perfectly flat bottom now so it will fit on any base. Okay, now, I just thought of something. I'm going to put it on, and you tell me whether you like it or whether it's not cool. Okay? Where is it? Oh, yeah. This might not print on FDM. What do you think of that? Okay, do you where do you want I'm not going to put it in the front cuz that would be a problem. I'm going to put it more again we want it more up towards the top simply because you know there there we go
And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select those, mask, unmask, you, because these need to be higher polygon count there. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And here we have your fighter barbarian. Okay. Now the next thing that we do is we need to reduce the polygon count. So the first thing we got a dynamics of 1280. That blends it all into a single solid surface. Three S's there, single solid surface. That also dropped it down to 2.7 million. 2.7 million is still far too many. So we go to Z plugin, go over to Decimation Master. Now he's got too many details with the scales and that for 35,000 triangles, so we're going to, or poly, uh, vertexes, so we're going to go to 50,000 vertexes, which will be 100,000 triangles. And you're going to see an orange bar up across the top of the screen once it's done analyzing mesh. It's going to go from 2.7 million tr vertexes to 50,000 vertexes. And you'll barely be able to tell any difference. Because it, keep, it, it reorders everything. There, see? You can't really tell. You might be able to see if you look closely in, at some of the uh, shading up on the forehead or that. But if you're just watching on YouTube, you really can't see it. So, this is your barbarian. He's done. And this, this is the amount of detail that will show on a resin print. This is about the amount of detail that will show on a good FDM print. As you can see, almost all of it will be visible. On FDM, there might be problems with the arrows in the shoulder. And you might not get as much detail in the face or beard. But, he's done. Now what I need you to do next, well let me go ahead and pop up. How did I suddenly get blurry? Anyway, what I need to do next is I need you to go ahead and uh, now oh, come on, what's going on? Okay, on the Discord, or in, in DM, go ahead and let me know your email address, so I can email you the file. Also, whether you want it in STL, or OBJ format, or both. The reason I offer both, STL is except used by more printing, uh, more slicing software. OBJ is easy, oh there we go. OBJ is easier for most modeling programs to edit. So if you wanted to go back in and edit it, like, I don't know, uh, remove the uh, arrows or swap out the rock for a skull, it'd be easier in a modeling program if you load it in through OBJ. So, this is Shinji, by the way. This is my 14-year-old baby girl. Anyway, it is now exactly 10 o'clock. I finished your figure in two hours. 
So, that means it's time for me to say goodnight. I am going to be holding up my hand, and as I count from five to one, when I get to one, I'll say something goofy, p pithy, pathetic, or, or silly, and then go, <laughs> when I see on YouTube, <laughs> that means I've caught up with the lag, and it's time to stop the broadcast. And you are welcome. So, that's going to be five, four, three, two, and one. So if a barbarian was a scald, would that make him a bardbarian? 